This is Lindsay and Kathy of Kindergarten Kiosk, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of individual hosts. Make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. And now the learning begins in... Three, Three, two, two, one. You you talk about student achievement, Mm -hmm. but if you get teachers on Sunday night not going, oh, God, it's Sunday night, I got to get up tomorrow morning, and and I'm not looking for cartwheels, um, but I'm looking for, you know, hey, uh, cool, another week of work. Yeah. Because then if, if I have a teacher that's engaged in front of their classroom and what they're doing and they're raring to go, there's no way students don't benefit because that's what they do. They Absolutely. teach. Um, it's when all that other garbage gets in the way and they, they don't feel valued and they don't feel empowered or supported that um, they experience that burnout and then it falls apart. Yeah. Um, and they, they don't want to be there and, and you know, <laughs> students yeah. know. Welcome to the Burned In Teacher Podcast. I'm Amber Harper, and the educators on this podcast are brave enough to share their stories of burnout with the world. On BIT, we get real, we get honest, and we take action. Action against the burnout with stories from burned out teachers, advice from experts, and actionable steps you can take today to beat the burnout and become a happier, more fulfilled human being. Let's get started. Hey, hey, Burned In Teachers, welcome to the Burned In Teacher podcast, one part burnout and all other parts action, inspiration, and support for teachers dealing with burnout. Last week, we talked to Jen Giffen from the Shooks and Gift podcast, and she shared 12 tips and tools that we can use in our classroom to create a wicked workflow. How are those things going? Have you used any of the tools that she has suggested for us? Let me know. Either share your progress and happenings on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and tag me at Burned In Teacher and share the action steps that you're taking to take control of your burnout. In fact, speaking of phone, did you know that you can tell Siri to subscribe to the Burned In Teacher podcast? It's seriously super simple. All you say is, hey, Siri, subscribe to the Burned In Teacher podcast, and she'll ask for your confirmation, and boom, it's done. After that, will you please give this podcast some love? Take a quick second to give the podcast an honest rating and review. Please, please, please consider it. I mean, don't do it if you're driving, but wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just put everything down for a quick second and subscribe. Also, give the Burned In Teacher podcast a rating and review, and you never have to do it again. Promise. Cross my heart. How's that for knocking something off your to-do list? Those subscriptions, ratings, and reviews help other burned out teachers find this podcast, and you all know how badly they need it. So go ahead, hit pause, do the things, and then get back on here so we can get this fire started. In this interview, we're going to be hearing from Dr. Chris Jones. I'm so excited about this. He's a teacher-centered principal from Massachusetts, and his expertise is in the idea of supporting, engaging, and empowering his teachers. He will be presenting on this topic at this year's National Principals Conference, and his beliefs are attached to his experiences as a teacher and how he can better serve those in the profession of education. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a principal that I could work for. (laughs) In this episode, Chris shares his experiences with burnout as a teacher and a principal. His perspective on challenges with balance as a teacher and a principal will help you to understand how you can take control of your stress, overwhelm, and burnout over all there is to do in the classroom. Now, something that I really quickly have to let you know about this interview is it was actually supposed to happen in last month's theme of administration is burning me out. But because of scheduling conflicts, it just didn't work out. But honestly, I think this worked out for the best for everybody because he and I had such a great conversation and it lasted so long and there are so many excellent nuggets of wisdom to share with you that I've decided to split this interview into two parts. So today you're going to hear a lot of his perspective on balance as an administrator because it fits with last month's theme. Next week, you're going to hear his perspective on balance in the classroom and how he supports his teachers when he notices that things are out of balance. Let's get started. Dr. Chris Jones, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Oh, no problem. It's, it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm excited to be here and, and talk about a, an incredibly important topic like burned out. Oh my gosh, it's it's such an important topic. And, you know, I'm so excited to have you on here today because last month's uh, February theme 
her burned in teacher was administration is burning me out. And <laughs> this month it's uh, lack of balance is burning me out. And you're here today to talk about, I think those two are just going to gel really, really easily because you've got your own story about, you know, as a principal, how you have to balance your life. And you can talk a little bit about what you've noticed with teachers and how you support them as an administrator when you notice that they are unbalanced as well. Sure. No, I'm, I'm excited to talk about those things. Um, I definitely remember things from my, my teaching career and from this side. And mm-hmm. um, I think I've carried a little bit over. So it, it should make for some interesting discussion. I, I really think so. So first of all, I love to get to know you and your journey. You know, I know that now you are a principal, but you did teach at one time. So I would love to hear, you know, how you got from there to here and maybe some lessons you've learned. And then, of course, we want to hear about a time where you have gone through burnout yourself and how you've overcome it. Sure. Um, You know, my my journey is an interesting one. Education is my second career. Um, I was a coppersmith before I went into education. And, um, you know, I, I, I was always into history, and so I was giving different tours of different battlefields, Civil War battlefields, to members of my family and so forth. And they were always saying, you should become a teacher, you should become a teacher. And I told them, because I always, I came, I came to a love of learning and, and the classroom structure and things like that late in life. And um, I told them, look, I, I'll teach anybody anything. I'm more than happy to try and help out or or spread this stuff that I'm excited about and passionate about. But um, I've been in high school and I know what it's like and the whole classroom management piece. And if people think I'm going to go there and just concentrate on discipline and keeping people in line, um, not so much for me. Mm -hmm. So make a long story short and fast forward, my first teaching job was at at an alternative high school. Um, So if you can can imagine somebody that didn't want to deal with discipline, but, That's uh, exactly what I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, my mother still gives me a hard time. She says, you know, I get this phone call. Hey, mom, I got a teaching job. And she said, you know, where is it? And I said, oh, such and such alternative high school. She was like, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I got that job um, and really started to understand because I got that job and I never looked back. And then I taught mm-hmm. some inner city schools and things like that. As I was teaching, I... I kind of had an odd journey to finding my why or being able to verbalize my why, so to speak. And I know that's kind of cliche right now, but um, I really knew it before I knew it. And it was Mm -hmm. just kind of identifying it, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So um, I was teaching and I was always taking a leadership type of role in the classroom. And I I would do some PD things with the staff and people were always asking me about different things, how to do them, classroom management stuff, um, instructional things. And... As a result, I was asked by a principal that had left to apply as an assistant principal. And so I really sat down and thought about it. And I said, you know, I really want to have a larger impact. Assistant principal isn't that far from the students because I didn't want to leave the students. Mm -hmm. And I thought that by being an assistant principal, I could help the teachers. And that was a stripped down bare bones beginning of my my teacher-centered philosophy for leadership. And... So I did that, and then just from there, the steps came naturally to move to where I was now. Now, I, I'm not a climber. I'm not interested in that next position up or anything like that. I just want to get really good at what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and by really good, I mean helping as many teachers as possible so that the effect on the students is much greater than it could be um, with just myself alone. So I ended up moving into... The position of principal, and and when I when I look back on it, um, those times that I changed in my career have to do with times that I felt burned out, um, and so the whole idea of burnout, you know, you talk about when those first times that I was burned out, or that time that I was burned out, I my 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 question to you is, do you want just the first one, or do you want the second, third, fourth, and fifth one as well? Right. Um, and that's it, what I've told teachers too. You don't go through it one time, and then it's like, whoo. <laughs> That was a rough go, but at least I made it through. I'm done now. It, it can happen right. more than once. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, you know, and that's the thing about burnout that, you, boy, your listeners are going to love this, but maybe it's a little helpful advice. <laughs> um, burnout never just goes away. Mm-hmm. You have to actively go after it to get it out of your life. Um, and unfortunately, when I was when I was younger, 
my mindset was such that I, uh, I'm just going to push through it. I don't need any help. I'm not going to talk to anybody. You know, what's wrong with me? Is it, is it, is it the burnout or is it somebody else? Because then that negativity and cynicism creeps in. Because if you never address it, it becomes the norm. And that norm takes the shape of negativity and cynicism. If you're burned out, I'll bet you catch yourself saying things like, no one can possibly understand where I'm coming from, or what's wrong with me? This is what I went to school for. Why am I so miserable? And even things like, if I tell anyone how I'm feeling, they'll think I'm being negative. I am so burned out. Maybe I'm just a negative person. But saying these things doesn't solve the real issues you're struggling with. You have to do something. Teachers from all over the world have joined the Burned In Teacher Facebook group for reasons such as there's too much to do and no time to do it or my administration doesn't offer any guidance or support for me or my class is out of control, plus many, many more reasons. These are all issues that we tackle in the Burned In Teacher Small Group Program. Starting April 8th, the doors are open again for another Burned In Teacher Tribe of teachers who want to join this group and start taking control over their burnout. Throughout this eight-week program of support, you won't just get access to me, but also access to Burned In Teacher mentors who have finished the program as well as the current members who are in your tribe. We will have weekly group calls, access to our Burned In Teacher Tribe members only Facebook group, and of course, a Burned In journal to help you to document your reflections and actions throughout the program. For more information or to read and watch testimonials from past Burned In Teacher Tribe members, go to burnedinteacher.com slash BIT coaching. That's burnedinteacher.com slash BIT coaching to get all of the information that you need to decide whether or not the Burned In Teacher Small Group Program is right for you. Doors are open now for you to register for the April Tribe. Let me take you from burned out to burned in. Each time I kind of confuse it almost with growing pain. So I figured, okay, well, I'm burnt out. So it must be something wrong with myself um, or the situation around me. So I, I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. I need to do something to improve myself or move up. So by doing that, I just naturally kind of moved up. And I was really lucky. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for all those along the way. But I was really lucky because the formation of my philosophy of leadership, um, my why, so to speak, kind of developed at the same time as I was moving up. Mm -hmm. So it made sense for me to make those moves. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's really interesting that you bring that up because I get questioned a lot for leaving the classroom and coaching teachers who are in the classroom. And, you know, it, it wasn't for me about getting out of the classroom. It was the fact that I had my journey in education. Other teachers have their own journeys. And I took what I felt was the next best step. And really what it came down to is because I do Google training and, and things like that, I lead PD at schools, I was having to say no a lot and because I had my obligations as a teacher. And I eventually, I got really tired of saying no. And I thought, you know what, could this be, you know, along with coaching teachers through, through burnout with, with burned in teacher, I wonder if this could work because I was putting in 40, 40 plus hours as a teacher and then coming home and doing another 40 on, on burned in teacher. And, you know, I sat down and talked to my husband and we decided, decided that, you know, I'll just give it a go because I, again, going back to this balance thing, you can't be good at everything. And, Sometimes you have to say no to be able to say yes. And I still have the opportunity, so grateful, to work with teachers and students as an ed tech consultant with schools in my local community. Um, so I didn't leave the classroom to get out of the classroom. But you eventually have to follow your journey and your why and your path. And mine was I really wanted to make a bigger impact on education. And I wasn't able to do that with my 30 students in my class. You know, I was impacting 30 students at a time or less, um, but I wanted to really work with teachers to help them to have a better impact on their 30 students or less, hopefully no more, but you know how it is. So um, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up because it really just comes down to your why, you know, and you really assessing and like you said, taking action 
because just letting it go and writing it out and saying, I can just do this alone, something's wrong with me or it's somebody else, really taking those actionable steps is the only way that you're going to get through it and be able to move on with your life. Absolutely. You know, and it's, it's the idea of taking those, taking those steps instead of just kind of living in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always good every once in a while. Sure. It's, it's good to sit back and, and, uh, feel a little bad or say that something's not work, working out and be sad about it. As long as you don't, you know, set up shop there right. and live there. Right. Um, and I've, I've told teachers I, before too, you're allowed one good cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One really good. I'm talking Just one. on the bathroom floor <laughs> in the fetal position. And then <laughs> you have to wipe those tears and you have to move on because I have parked myself in that place before. Mm -hmm. And it's not just miserable for me. It's miserable for everyone I come into contact with. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I'm so glad you said miserable for everybody you came into contact with because it's until you realize how you're impacting others uh, as well as yourself that you're going to kind of still live there. Mm -hmm. Because like I said before, it becomes our norm. So we don't realize how bad it actually is. You know, if, if I equate it to somebody that's in pain or has chronic pain, mm -hmm. Um, they live with that pain and they don't know how good it feels to be healthy because they get used to it. So when you're burned out and when you're cynical on education or you're cynical on the school you're at, that is your norm that you live in. And, and for me personally, um, probably the last time I was burned out until I really got going, um, there was an event that happened that got me out of being burned out that had a lot to do with balance, had a lot to do with scheduling. I got married and then I had kids. <laughs> um, so true. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I, and you know, my priorities shifted a little bit, but I had to realize, and thank you to my wife, mm -hmm. I had to realize that um, I needed to make time for other things because education is such a field and teaching is such a field that it will take everything you have to give it mm -hmm. and then it will ask you for more. Mm -hmm. And unless you're able to set up those schedules or those boundaries, um, you know, like we were talking in the pre-show that um, I block time and that's how I get a lot more done. I block out my schedule and there are certain things, um, certain times that I just won't do anything. I block out family time mm -hmm. and people don't typically understand that because um, you said that you had to say no to a lot of things, but every yes we say is saying no to something else. Absolutely. So, we're clear about what we want to do, um, it makes things so much easier. Um, when, when at first I was putting things with my family for family time in a calendar, um, and on my calendar in a block, my wife said, really, you've got to schedule time for the family. And then I explained to her what I was doing. My wife's a teacher, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, I explained to her what I was doing. She was like, oh, okay. And she gets it. Yeah. Um, because now that's, that's time that unless obviously things come up, um, unless something special comes up, that's our sacred time together. Right. So. And maybe if you're not comfortable with calling it blocking out time for your family, you could say I'm prioritizing time for my family because that's essentially what, what blocking comes down to is making a certain, um, a certain task a priority over everything else because within those, those larger tasks, you've got a to-do checklist. So, you know, you've got all of those little sub to do's, you know, under that, that big to do. So that has been really helpful. And I can, I can definitely, definitely uh, connect with you on that level. I've had to do the same thing. Yeah, it, it really does that. I, um, you know, and it's funny because different things like blocking time or looking at things different. I find that the burnout I experienced because I was so confused about it as far as whether it was burnout or whether it was growing pains, um, or whether it was just me wanting more because I'm, I'm that, that driven type of person about always wanting more, mm -hmm. the burnout that I was experiencing from above me, because I don't want to, I don't want to shortchange you on the, my administration is burning me out. <laughs> um, the burnout that was coming from above me was just the idea that it's good enough and we don't want to do anything different. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to, we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to push the envelope. And I get that people are going to be like that, but then the feelings of burnout, like aggravation, frustration, that all comes out in a very real way when I'm trying to do something different. And it's not just that you're standing aside because it's not for you, but it's you're actively getting in my way. Mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. actively doing things to try and stop me. Mm -hmm. That makes it that much more difficult to achieve what I believe really needs to be achieved or at least attempted. Right. 
Um, and so, you know, you talk about administrators and how to deal with administrators. I find that, and and it helps me with the teacher center part because I, I have a I have a nice little graphic that I <laughs> a circle um, that I talk about with it. But it, you know, it starts with supporting your teachers, then it moves to engaging your teachers, then it moves to empowering your teachers. And unfortunately, a lot of administrators and leaders miss the boat after empowerment. Mm -hmm. They'll struggle through and they'll get to the part of empowerment and then they'll stop. Well, proper empowerment is just a little outside the teacher's grasp, trying something different, trying something new, and then they're gonna fall down. So they need more support. So they don't complete the circle and start the circle again, which then puts the teacher back to zero, which mm -hmm. I, I found out being part of burnout. So there's nothing worse than being burned out seeing somebody come in be a leader and say all right try this i'm going to let you run with this now you're now you're elated almost because you see that light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. but then when you fall down and they don't support you in falling down and it goes away that light at the end of the tunnel wasn't the end of the tunnel it was a train oh, and you, so true. you fall back right back into that so mm -hmm. um, it's really important for staff members to really honestly talk to administration and I, I know that's not always easy to do. I know that's not always welcome to do. But I would encourage any teacher that's feeling burnout from administration because they're not supported or they're not empowered to vocalize that to their administrator in a fashion that they know their administrator will be receptive to. Mm -hmm. uh, some you can walk up to and say it right to them. You can walk in. Sometimes maybe they want an email. Hey, I, you know, I really need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage anybody um, because as a principal, I've got so many things going on at once, and it's it's more than just seeing you in the hallway, you coming up with a great idea, and me saying, hey, would you really please email that to me? Not because I don't like your idea. I love your idea. I just want to make sure I remember it. So the idea that you may be in the classroom across the hall from that other conversation I'm having, feeling burned out about something, I might not know. Mm -hmm. And so until it's vocalized, until you reach out, um, a lot of times your administrators may overlook the fact that you're burned out. It's it's so true. And and again, that's a decision that we have to make to take action rather than just internalizing it and keeping it inside to actually bring right. it up because it's not personal. It's not a personal attack on anybody. It's just opening up that conversation. And that's that's definitely I you're probably the third person, you know, if I would have aired this interview um, in February that that has said that that just, you know, open up that conversation and if your principal is not interested in having that conversation then you have another decision to make and that is whether or not you want to work with a leader like that you know and I don't know if everybody has that um, that flexibility to make that decision but it definitely needs to be something that you consider because you, you do choose who essentially you do choose where and who you work for it's so hard to say this because you do care about the people that work in, as your staff members, you know, your teachers, your support staff. You do care about them and you want to do what's right by them, but you ultimately have to do what's right by you, right. you know, and, and that's a hard thing to do. And I think that's one thing that, that teachers sometimes really struggle with is initially what teachers typically say they got into education for was to make an impact, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, we lose that in all of the day-to-day -day stuff that comes and goes and all of the tasks and the, the many lists of to-dos. And, and really, you have to reassess your why. Was that really the best why for you? And, and how do you get back to it? Or how do you reassess your why? Or maybe, makes, you know, maybe make some small changes to, to help you to understand why it is that you're doing this. You know, and like you said earlier, you know, it, it doesn't have to be cartwheels but at least you're not crying on your way to work every day. Right, right, you know? right. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing conversation. I know at the end we were kind of laughing a little bit about crying on your way to work, but I can tell you from personal experience that crying all the way to work to teach kids is no laughing matter. Here are my takeaways from this teacher-centered principal, a.k.a. Dr. Chris Jones, who believes that administrators should support, engage, and empower their teachers. Here's takeaway number one. Burnout can and typically will happen more than once. We've already talked about this on the podcast, but it's so true, and it doesn't just go away. Your control over your burnout is directly linked to the action steps that you take to get out of it. 
simply trying to push through or blaming it on someone else is not going to help you actively get out of it. Takeaway number two, it's important to pay attention to the negativity and cynicism that you're feeling. If you don't identify it as abnormal and start taking action to get out of it, you'll get comfortable and it will become your norm. Until you realize how you're impacting others because of your burnout, you're going to continue to live there. We sometimes don't realize how good it feels to be healthy because you get used to it. So really take time to evaluate your teacher brand that we talked about a few weeks ago and realize whether or not it actually fits your why. We're going to talk about that here in a second. The third takeaway is burnout can also be associated with growing pains. Sometimes growth hurts. Imagine your muscle soreness after a good workout. You're growing your muscles, which means tiny tears in them, and that hurts. The only way you're going to continue to feel better is to keep taking action, to keep working those muscles instead of letting that pain overtake you and keeping you in the current shape that you're in. Number four, you can't be good at everything and you have to understand that when you say yes to some things, you're saying no to others. What are you going to say yes or no to to change your current reality? Number five, When making a decision, as you're taking actions to get out of the burnout, go back to your why. If you don't have one, it's important to get one. What is your why? Why do you teach every day? Number six, reflect on when the lack of balance started and respect those reasons. Dr. Jones talked about how his lack of balance really started whenever he got married and had kids. Burnout is an effect, not a cause. Say it with me. Burnout is an effect, not a cause. Therefore, you need to figure out when it started and why it started in the first place. Number seven, use time blocking to create priority among all of the things that are the most important. I have most highlighted, underlined, and bolded here. Sometimes things need to go. Only spend time on the things that are most important and most impactful. That is including family, or friend time. If it gets scheduled, it gets done. Number eight, if you're in a place that doesn't match your why, your desire for innovation and change against the status quo, or if someone is actively standing in your way of you doing what is truly best for kids, it's time to have a conversation with your administrators to make sure that you're fully understanding the situation. Like I mentioned last month, if you're not in the right place for you, you have some decisions and plans to make for a change that will benefit your happiness and fulfillment in your career. So today, when considering how you can create more balance in your life, I dare you to, number one, decide your why. Why do you teach? Share on social media and tag me at Burned and Teacher and tag Dr. Jones at Dr. C.S. Jones on Twitter. Next, try time blocking. Just like we block out different parts of our day to teach certain subjects, Block certain parts of your day to do the most important and urgent tasks during your prep or before or after school. Definitely, definitely tag me in those posts and let me know how things are going. Take a picture of your Google Calendar or your paper planner and show me how it is that you're blocking your time. Don't forget to tag me at Burned In Teacher. And finally, talk to others and get ideas on how they create balance in their lives because it doesn't just happen. Balance or harmony is created out of necessity and the determination to do better. Until next week, I wish you the happiness and fulfillment in your career and life. Burn on. That's it for this week's episode of the Burned In Teacher Podcast. Until next week, take a deep breath. You are your own hero. And you just took another step to becoming a Burned In Teacher. Burn on. If you want to be updated on the latest Burned In Teacher podcast episodes, don't forget to subscribe to the Burned In Teacher podcast on Google Play or iTunes. Also, please consider leaving a review and leave a rating so that other teachers who are feeling the burnout can find this podcast to help them feel supported as they continue their journey out of burnout. Thanks so much.